By the end of this video, it is my prayer that you are closer to the person of the Holy Spirit than ever before. I'm David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church on Encounter TV. Now, I'm going to be ministering this lesson called Prayers of the Holy Spirit. And these are prayers that we're going to be praying together that will draw you closer, that will bring you to places of repentance, that will bring you to places of consideration and meditation. And as we go through the Word of God, as we go through this lesson, we will pause, as I said, and pray with one another. And I truly do believe that you're going to be drawn closer to the person of the Holy Spirit than ever before. These points are simple. These prayers are powerful. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's going to lead you in worship, and then we're going to get right into this lesson. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. And our Father, all of heaven roars your name, sing louder. Let this place hear up with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Our Father, all of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place hear up with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. The sound of heaven touching earth. Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit Spirit break out Break our walls down Yes Spirit break out Heaven come down, Spirit, Spirit break out, break out, break our walls down, yes, Spirit break out, Heaven come down, Spirit. Spirit break out, break our walls down. Spirit break out, heaven come down. So I'm going to go through some very simple points. And what you're watching here is the first of a two-part lesson. And I want you right now, wherever you're watching this, to make this your private time with the Lord. I want you to close out the things of this world. I want you to find a quiet place. I want you to clear your mind. And I want you to relax. I want you to just focus on what is being taught here. And let's pursue our friendship with the Holy Spirit. I truly do believe that every believer can be a friend of the Holy Spirit. And I want to get down to this first point here. And I'm going to talk to you about His voice. And then we're going to pray that you would hear His voice more clearly. I truly believe that every believer needs to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with clarity. Listen, there are those who walk in an uncertainty and they go throughout their Christianity believing that the voice of the Holy Spirit is something that is faint, is something that they hear every so often. But I know, because of what the Scripture says, that you are to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit with clarity. You should be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit to where there's no questioning, 
to where there's no doubt, to where there is absolute certainty that you are hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how many times I've been approached by Christians who say, help me hear the voice of God or prophesy over me concerning a situation because I don't know what to do. And the truth is that God wants you to be able to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit for yourself. The truth is that you were not meant to walk in this uncertainty. I believe you can come to know the voice of the Holy Spirit with such clarity and with such certainty that all doubt will be removed. It should not be accepted as a normal part of your Christianity to struggle to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You don't see that anywhere in the Bible. You don't see it with the prophets. You don't see it with Jesus. You don't see it with the disciples. You don't see it with the early church. There was a constant and certain interaction between the believer and the Holy Spirit. He was able to speak to them clearly. And we've sort of settled for distracted spirituality. We've settled for being uncertain about his voice. But the scripture says this in John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, the world is distracted. The world is busy and in a hurry. But you can begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, not a year from now, not a month from now, not a week from now. You can begin to hear the Holy Spirit with perfect clarity from this moment onward. God wants you to hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. So the question is not, can I hear the voice of God? The question is, am I a sheep? Do I belong to him? And if you belong to the Lord, if you're a believer, if you've been saved, if you've been born again, then you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and you can hear his voice with clarity. So I want to stop here. And this is a prayer to hear his voice. Come on, pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one watching, Lord. And I ask you, Father, to begin to Speak to them clearly. And Lord, help us to be able to discern your voice. Help us to be able to put aside distraction. I want you right now, just begin to repent for allowing yourself to be distracted. Just begin to give it to God. Say, Lord, I'm sorry for being distracted. Say, speak, Lord. Your servant hears in Jesus' name. Amen. So that was a prayer to hear his voice. But there's a second part of that verse. Let's look at that verse again. John chapter 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. That second part in the book of John is talking about obedience. The scripture says in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When he speaks, we must listen. Otherwise, why should he speak? We must become sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I talk about sensitivity, I'm not just talking about the ability to hear him. I do want to hear the voice of God with such clarity that I can hear a whisper in the Spirit that there is no uncertainty in my ability to hear him, that I walk confidently knowing that I am hearing from the Holy Spirit, that he's speaking to my heart, and that I am in communion and fellowship with him. Yes, you can have that. That can be yours. But we also must learn to obey the voice of the Holy Spirit. Sensitivity to the voice of the Holy Spirit is not just about how clearly you can hear him. It's also about how quickly you respond to that voice. Sensitivity isn't just the ability to receive a message from God. Sensitivity is how quickly you prioritize moving upon what God said. Remember this, when it comes to obeying God, delay is disobedience. When God has spoken for you to do something and it's been clear to you, and you hold off on receiving that, or you hold off on obeying that message, that delay in your life is disobedience. The scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, 
and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. The scripture here is saying, look, the Holy Spirit's the one who guarantees your salvation. The Holy Spirit is the one who has sealed you and has made it an assurance that you will be raised to life again at the day of the resurrection. But so often we ignore the voice of the Holy Spirit. So often we push him away. I remember I was looking for a series to watch. Now, nowadays, I don't really have much time for much else of anything other than ministry, time with my wife, and some fellowship with friends. Other than that, my schedule is just packed. Now, there was a time in my life where I was able to every so often catch a movie at home or watch a TV series at home. And I really do enjoy cinema. I enjoy the art of it. And I loved watching movies and, and, and TV series that were filmed with great cinematography, where the acting was good, the storyline was gripping. And if you're like me, you love that too. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying entertainment so long as that entertainment is not ungodly in any way. But I remember I was going through a series and I found this series that I absolutely loved. It was, the theme was on point for me. The acting was great. The storyline I found to be intriguing. And so I watched the first episode of this, this TV series and I told myself I found a new show to watch. So now when I get some free time and I'm just relaxing, which you need to have if you're going to be effective in ministry, then I said to myself, I will watch this show. And something in me told me that this was something that I needed to not do. Something in me tried to prevent me from watching this. And now I, I, I thought with a natural mind, I thought, well, there's nothing in this series that I find blatantly ungodly. There's nothing sinful. There's nothing graphic. And so I kind of dismissed that thought. I thought maybe that was just me thinking that. Maybe I'm just being a little paranoid or maybe I'm just being a little bit too hard on myself. And so I just dismissed that notion. And the next day, I came into my ministry office and one of the staff members here, the, the CFO of our, of our organization, he handles all the finance, uh, he walks up to me, just begins to give me a little bit of a breakdown of where we were at the time. And after we were done talking business, I just sort of casually went into the conversation and said, well, there was this show that I watched last night and I really like it and I think I found a new show. And so this person tells me, he said, no, listen, Diga, you're not going to like this show. So what do you mean I'm not going to like it? The cinematography is good. The acting's good. The storyline's good. It's clean. Of course I'm going to like it. He said, no, you absolutely won't like it. And we went back and forth like this a couple times. She was adamant telling me, you're not going to like this show. And I said, well, why not? He said, well, listen, the first episode is fine. He said, but by the time you get into the second episode, it gets very graphic and there's a lot of content that I know for a fact you don't allow in your home, so you won't like it. And so I was disappointed that I no longer would have something to watch. And I begin to walk away from the conversation. And as I'm walking away, I hear the Holy Spirit speak to me. He says, why is it that you'll listen to him when he warns you, but you won't listen to me? And in that moment, something that was seemingly insignificant weighed me down. And I realized that was the Holy Spirit trying to speak to me. That was the Holy Spirit who was leading me. And I almost didn't obey that leading. Luckily, the Lord sent in someone to intercept it. And you may be listening to this and saying, well, that's not that big of a deal. But the truth is, there are things we do all the time. There are things we allow ourselves to think, to watch, to hear, to say that offend the person of the Holy Spirit, that grieve him in his heart. And we need to be people who obey his leading, who say, Holy Spirit, I don't care if I'm mocked for it. I don't care if my flesh has to miss out on some things. I don't care if I'm perceived as abnormal, but I'm going to obey your leading. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. You see, my greatest fear used to be the demonic realm and being attacked by a demonic being. That's what used to make me afraid. And then 
as I grew out of that, because of my spiritual connection with the Holy Spirit, He helped me to overcome that fear. Then I became afraid of the opinions of people. And you know, those are two fears that people carry in their hearts. They're afraid of offending men, and they're afraid of the demonic realm. They're afraid of spiritual warfare. Some believers are afraid of death. Of all the fears that we could have, my greatest fear is not that I would be assaulted by a demonic being, because I know who's inside of me. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I'm not afraid of the opinions of men, because the Lord is on my side. Why? Because I obey His Word. I don't have to be afraid of what people say or do. And because of salvation, we don't have to fear death. But my greatest fear is not being attacked by a demonic being. It's not by, it's not of the opinions of men. My greatest fear is that the Holy Spirit would lift His anointing from my life. My greatest fear is that I would grieve the Holy Spirit of God. My greatest fear would be that the presence would be lifted from me. Now I know there are those who say, Brother David, that's Old Testament. The Holy Spirit does not lift His presence from us. But the truth is, the truth is, whether you like it or not, that there is some obstruction that disobedience brings to our awareness and experience of His presence. I don't care what you say. King David prayed, Cast me not away from Thy presence, O Lord, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from within me. You say, well, that was the Old Testament. Yes, but He's the same Holy Spirit. And though the presence of God never leaves the believer, There is a certain lifting of a certain grace, not the grace of salvation. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a certain sense of His presence, a certain awareness of His person, a certain closeness that you can have. When you grieve Him, that is obstructed. So let's pray now that we would be those who would obey His leading. This is a prayer to obey His leading. Come on, pray with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my viewer right now. Lord, I pray for the listener right now. Help us, Lord, to obey your leading. Forgive us, Father. Cleanse us, Jesus, by your blood. Make us new. Father, I pray for that one listening, that one watching, that your Holy Spirit would touch them. And Father, expose those things in our hearts. Expose those areas where we need to obey your leading. Bring them to our attention. Call us on it, Lord. Search us and rid us of everything that you despise. We want to love what you love. We want to hate what you hate. We want to be pleasing to you in our actions, in our deeds, in our thoughts, Lord. In Jesus' name, help us to obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. So we pray to hear his voice. We pray to obey his leading. Number three, In a moment, I'm going to pray that we would receive his power. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When you live holy, when you obey his leading, you become a vessel fit for the master's use. I love what Catherine Coleman used to say. Catherine Coleman would say, God is not looking for golden vessels. God is not looking for silver vessels. God is looking for yielded vessels. When it comes to being used by the Holy Spirit, it's not a matter of how gifted you are, how talented you are, how charismatic you are, how intelligent you are. 
It's a matter of how surrendered you are. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 tells us that we'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. At salvation, He brings us to life by the Spirit. That is something that happens within us. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the reception of His power, is when the Holy Spirit comes upon. He comes to dwell within, and He comes to empower us by coming upon us. We need to be people who receive a fresh touch of the Holy Ghost. The book of Acts chronicles several times where the church would be filled again. We need a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. That scripture that tells us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't have time to go into it, but in the original language, it's talking about a continual infilling. It's as though you have your phone and you want to charge it. It's, it's the same as being at 100% and plugging your phone into a wall. You are filled and being filled. The phone is charged and being charged. When your phone is plugged in, you're not worried about what apps you run, how often you use it, or what you do on that phone. You're not trying to conserve anything because you're connected to a source that's going to keep the power supply up. That's what it's like to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not running on empty. You're not, you're not going on your own. You are connected to the source. You are filled and being filled. It's a continuation. We must receive His power. His power is the difference. His presence is the source. His power is what enables you to cast out devils. His power is what enables you to heal the sick. His power is what gives you the ability to preach the gospel in such a way that it will convict the hearts of men and bring them to repentance before the feet of Jesus. The power of God is by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you fresh, so let us receive His power. Father, in Jesus' name, I really feel it, guys. I want you to stretch your hands toward mine. In the name of Jesus, I pray for that one watching right now, Lord. And I pray that the anointing of the Holy Ghost would consume their being, Lord. Let the fire and presence of God fill their entire being. Make them fit for your use. Lord, I pray that they would receive your power despite what men have criticized you for, Lord. Despite our preconceived notions, despite our hesi hesitations and our reservations, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would fill us with your power. In Jesus' name, amen. So we prayed to hear his voice. We prayed to obey his leading. We prayed to receive his power. And now I want to pray to understand his revelation. Just a few verses I want to read to you. John chapter 14, verse 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 20 says, You gave your good spirit to instruct them. Your manna you did not withhold from their mouth, and you gave them water for their thirst. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27 says, As for you, the anointing which you receive from him abides in you, and you have no need for anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you abide in Him. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand revelation. You cannot know the Word of God without the Spirit. The Holy Spirit without the Word brings inspiration. The Word without the Spirit brings information. But the Spirit and the Word together bring revelation. You need both the Word and you need the Holy Spirit to experience the fullness of what God wants to teach you from this Word. You need His help when you're going through the Scripture. You need His help when you're reading this Bible. You need to receive the revelation. And it is by the Spirit. You cannot understand spiritual matters with the natural mind. You can only understand spiritual matters by the Holy Spirit. He wants to reveal Jesus in the Scripture. He wants to reveal the qualities 
of the Father. He wants to give you understanding of doctrine and of truth. That's what He does. And He will do it for you now. So let's in faith ask Him and let's receive this. Let's pray this prayer to understand His revelation. Father, I pray right now again for that one who is watching. Give them the anointing to understand your teaching, Jesus. Give them the anointing by the Holy Spirit to know the truth that they might be set free. Lord, as their eyes move over the words of truth in your scripture, let them be filled with revelation of the Holy Spirit. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus. And I want you to say it right now. Say, Amen. So we prayed to hear his voice. We prayed to obey his leading. We prayed to receive his power. And we prayed to understand his revelation. Now, next week, I'm going to be finishing this up. And I'm going to be praying four more in four more areas for you and doing four more short teachings like that. And then after that, I'm beginning a brand new series on the Holy Spirit. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep watching Spirit Church. And that is it for that lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. Take a look, see your name if you signed up. Uh, within the last couple of weeks, you should see your name up there on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. We appreciate you joining the Spirit family. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit Church family or Spirit Church, then go ahead and click on the link that's just about to appear over my head. If you're not watching this on YouTube, if you're watching this on a different version of the video, that link will not appear, but instead you can use the information at the bottom of the screen to become a member of Spirit Church. Sign up, get a free weekly teaching, and I know it'll bless you. I want to get to your comments now. These comments are from the video, The Teaching Persistent Faith. Claudine Bailey writes, Wow, I saw this video on my YouTube main page. I clicked on something else totally unrelated, then I saw it on the right. I thought God clearly wants me to see this video. Thank you so much. I have been blessed. David is right. The Holy Spirit is here. Hallelujah. Keep these videos coming. I have been edified as always. Hannah writes, this is so encouraging and exactly what I needed to hear today. I had considered giving up in an area of my ministry and then came across this video. Thank you for the challenge to persist in what God has called me to do. I am confident that the faithfulness of our God is far beyond enough for breakthrough in my high school. We're going to pray for the Lord to send breakthrough and revival by His Spirit in the name of Jesus. Come on, viewers, I want you to agree with me. In Jesus' name, in Hannah's high school, that there will break out a revival that can only be credited to the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Len John writes, that's so crazy. God placed on my heart to open a business and I got discouraged today looking for some work. Then this was published today. That's awesome. I believe he's talking about a word of knowledge that he possibly received from that video. We're glad the video blessed you. Victor Wooding writes, you impacted my life. I am no longer the person I used to be. Well, we know that it was Jesus who impacted your life and to him and him alone belongs all the glory. But we thank you for watching Spirit Church on Encounter TV. Faith Angela writes, I am facing a really painful season of life. There are a lot of thoughts in my head about quitting, doubts that maybe I should compromise a little. But God just really spoke to me through your message it really affirmed me. Thank you so much. Well, that's why we do what we do. We want to edify the body. And really, this ministry is a twofold ministry. We edify the church and we evangelize the lost. I want to update you now. Don't turn off this video. Last week, I talked about the need for partners. Last week, I told you, I believe it was somewhere in the 460, 470 range on how many partners we needed. Now, remember, as people are signing on to become partners, sometimes we get a couple people who quit their partnership, and that's okay because there's always growth every single month, and we are getting closer and closer and closer to our goal of that 1,000 new $30 a month partners. We are more than halfway there. Let me tell you what this is going to do real quickly. The expansion of our ministry to win more souls, we're going to get a new ministry facility. 
We're going to hold Sunday night meetings to bring revival to the Southern California area. We're going to have a 24-7 prayer room. We're going to begin to do live broadcast on YouTube, Facebook, and all over the place. We're going to produce more programs for television. We're going to do more events in more locations across the U.S. and the world. So ultimately, this ministry wins the lost and edifies the believer through worldwide television, international events, and global discipleship programs. So here's what I need you to do. Sign up to become a $30 a month partner today. Don't wait to do that. Do it now, right when you're hearing this. Now, some of you can sign up to become a $30 a month partner. Some of you can do more. But I believe there are those watching that can also sow those larger one-time gifts. If God puts $1,000 on your heart, $500 on your heart, $100 on your heart, do it today. Don't delay support the ministry, help us expand. Look, this ministry, as I keep saying it, because it's continuing, is experiencing explosive growth. We are on the cusp of expanding this ministry to reaching many, many, many more. Right now, as it stands, we're reaching about a million plus people on Facebook in one week alone. So every week now, one million people being reached on Facebook alone. That's not counting our YouTube and television and events. So God is really moving invest in this ministry, invest in souls, and I know God will bless you for it. I believe that as you sow into this ministry, that God sees your giving and that God is pleased with what you're doing. Help us win souls. How much is the soul worth to you? Help us impact an eternity somewhere and help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Give today, sign up today, don't delay. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Hey, what's up, guys? Thank you so much for watching Encounter TV. My name is Stephen Moctezuma, and I want to encourage each and every one of you to subscribe to Encounter TV. Encounter TV features hundreds of videos that will help you draw closer to the Lord. We feature worship, miracles, teachings, and so much more. Encounter TV, experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit.